Okay, guys. Uh, today, Friday, it was a tight range day, and days where the range is really, really narrow it causes a lot of problems for many. So I wanted to focus on this subject a little bit and share with you what I do. It might help. It might be useless. If it's useless, just discard it, ignore it. Uh, this is what I normally do. I'm I'm well aware of the initial range, which I define that as the six, the 60 minutes, and so do the first 60 minutes in the index futures of the regular trading hours or the pit session. So do a lot of market pro profile users. So these two lines represent um, the initial range. Now, when we talk about ranging days, that's when price is pretty much trading it creates a range and it begins trading within that range in other words it can't expand the range any further what normally happens is price will end up bouncing or oscillating between support and resistance areas that are near the extreme so the extreme high of the range extreme low of the range okay now these ranges are normally created uh, market opens and tries to find direction, takes off, and then it meets some kind of support and resistance and there isn't enough buyers or sellers depending on which direction it was going to balance, to expand that range. Or okay. So price starts to move back into that range and begin to find value or begin to find buyers and sellers and then it'll continue trading. As long as it stays within that range what, in, what really is happening is there isn't any conviction to move price one way or the other. So it becomes a trader's market, a, day, a trader's market. And traders, professional traders, which these markets, the U.S. index future markets are filled with them, they're very good at realizing and noticing these type of markets quite fast. And when they, as soon as they do realize it, they adapt to it and they have a set of tools in their toolbox or a set of strategies that they use for days like this. What ends up happening is a lot of other traders, uh, particularly new traders, uh, find themselves lost in this type of price action and end up taking a lot of trades, over trading, and trading at the wrong places. Uh, so what I do, I... Like I said, I'm aware of the initial range, so I either eyeball it or I draw lines. If it's hard to remember where they are, then I'll draw a line. Then the next thing I do is I try to find support and resistance, okay, within that within that range, okay. If I see support, if I see resistance is near the top of the range, even though the initial balance is a at this point here, in other words, this line, this horizontal line here, then I'll mark that. Now, the reason the resistance was lower, it wasn't around up here, is because the most recent, recent areas that I noticed, and support and resistance can be subjective, so you might not agree with how I, or what I determine as support and resistance, but uh, uh, the point is to use them, okay? This is where I, notice to be resistance okay because this was the prior highs and I noticed that this vertical this horizontal line had a lot of intersections with other swing points that's where I notice as resistance now here this is uh, yesterday's value high and also So this is basically what you could refer to it as a zone or you could use those levels, okay? For me, this is the area. And now what I want to do is I don't want to trade within this what I don't want to do is trade anywhere where price is inside of this area. Okay? Now ignore these because this is a this is today's value area so I just have it on there because I wanted to show the prior days but in other words I want to look for trades in this area and where I drew the gray boxes inside here is pretty much a nightmare to trade inside there so don't trade inside there um, now every day it's not again like I said resistance could have been higher depending on I don't have any higher areas so 
I didn't focus on resistance being there and I ended up being correct with where I drew. Now I might draw this as support but if I don't see market bouncing off of it, if I, in other words here it confirmed it for me that this was indeed support and this will be support too we just didn't test it at least ES didn't but it, so that's how I begin another this is a method that you can use anybody can use regardless if you're a trade station user regardless of what platform you're using so this is a simple easy way just to understand support and resistance begin to use those areas and be aware of the initial range okay the problem is that when for ex when we pull back inside the initial range now the initial range was narrow but it wasn't quite so narrow but normally you would expect price to move even higher when we pull back into there what happens traders new traders will see this price action fall and they'll say wow the market's going to break down and they'll short right here right in this area where all the other professionals are thinking about going long or all the other traders with uh, experience are thinking about going long and then they'll see market come up here and they'll want to buy a pullback here and what happens price comes back down here same here same here same here so shorting in this area you're just shorting right into buyers that are going to overwhelm you same with over here shorting in this area now if you're going to short then this is the area to short this is the area to short this is when we test into these resistant areas that's the areas to short if you're going to buy these are the areas that you want to buy okay and the way you know that i mean you could initial range is telling you can know that information within the first 60 minutes and finding resistance and support a little bit of practice just going over your charts and just practicing that you'll pick it up real quick um, so that's that's a, a one way that you can pretty much uh, without any fancy indicators anything you can just be able to tell if we're ranging, particularly when we begin to trade and the initial range is very narrow and we begin to consistently stay in there, you really have to be careful not to short continue and not don't take continuation trades near these major support or continuation trades near this major resistance areas. You really you have to switch your game around. You need to uh, think of fading them, okay? And same with down here, fading these moves down here. Now, if the market comes down and takes out these resistant levels, then you need to switch back to, okay, possibly we're, okay, now we're trending, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with the moves. Or if, vice versa, if we come up here and take out these levels, then you're going to want to think about going with the move. So you need to adapt to these situations, and um, you really have to sit down and draw a plan for yourself and be able to define what is a ranging market, what is a trending market okay what exactly do I define as ranging market or trending market and write these down and be objective about these rules and it will help you dramatically about understanding price action and trading within the context of price action and within the context of obviously range and initial range hope this helps towards the value low like I said I w as you can see I'm short from 1113 stop wasn't changed we're getting to that point I